Namaskar, I'm Ashok Vyas. We are talking about something which relates to each and every one of us. And that also comes to our attention, especially when the yearly International Day of Yoga is observed and which uh, we have. And that uh, continues in our minds, especially for a few days. But there are some people who took to yoga long, long ago. And not only that, they started practicing, they started teaching also. And someone who, in addition to his uh, act, life uh, in the world of uh, corporate work where uh, as an engineer and as a management consultant he has served for many years but he is also known in a group of his students as Yogacharya Vijay Trivedi Markande ji. So welcome, Namaste. Namaste sir ji, you have given us a lot of Thank you oh. very much. विजय जी बढ़िया की बात से मुझे याद आया मैंने आपका सेशन अटेंड किया हुआ है और आप इतना बढ़िया प्रेम से योग सिखाते हैं इसका मतलब है कि आपको भी योग से प्रेम है अब बात शुरू वहां से बात सर जी <laughs> बात शुरू यहां वहां से करते हैं या ये प्रेम कैसे शुरू हुआ योग से uh, मैं लाइक आई वर्कड ऑल माय लाइफ इन इंडस्ट्रियल सेल्स and then I always keep meeting different, different people. And one of my friend, he found uh, from somewhere that there is a systematic training going on called Siddha Samadhi Yoga. So he, without even asking me, he went and enrolled us. And then I took a training of around like 14 days. So first uh, few days, uh, it was like... Uh, uh, three hour session every day and then last three days was residential and from there when i really went in the residential retreat and i took the whole training and then i came back and that evening i started meditating and that experience which led me into something it is not describable it is only experiential that experience changed my entire attitude towards the life that I must learn what is the really behind this experience, which science is involved. And from that day, I decided that, no, I want to go into the depth. Then I took all the advanced courses. I took 21 days residential training in Pune, Bosri, under the guidance of my guru, Rishi Prabhakar. Uh, and I become a a teacher, Siddha Samadhi Yoga teacher, and my guru gave me uh, lovingly the name Markandya. So Markandya is, they call it like, uh, he's the inventor of the, uh, of our uh, Mrityanjaya Mantra. Markandya was about to die. Drishta, Rishi wo Drishta Mantra ke Markandya Rishi mange jate hain. Aur yeah. wo bhi Chiran Jeeviyo mein sammilit hain, like he's ever alive. So, he's Alive today, he was supposed to live only 14 days, and then he went on doing the sadhana uh, of Shivalinga, and then he embraced Shivaling, and then he chanted that, and he became uh, like you say, immortal. <laughs> so immortality indeed uh, is um, an important, if I say, concept for now, but the way we live and the quality of life that we live. It is uh, very greatly influenced by practice of yoga, as you experience in Siddha Samadhi Yoga. So, when you have initially course and you have said that you have to go to meditation, mein gaye to, there must have been a combination of uh, asanas, pranayam, and you have to tell me about the yoga. How uh, do you look at the package of yoga when you uh, consider? Uh, Teaching somebody yoga, so many people in their minds are only asana. Kindly tell us, how do you see yoga like? How you describe it? So I would propose that we really look at uh, the scope of uh, yoga. Is it okay? Sure. So may, if it is left to me, I consider yoga as a term, not as a word. Huh? Mm -hmm. it, the scope of the yoga is nothing less than infinite. Like you, you see the whole life as constraint and yoga is something which is liberating us 
into infinite so there is a there is a existence human existence which is lived by so many constraints a person goes through the sadhana of yoga the abhyas of yoga and he liberates himself this is how connect the regular life and coming to a state of liberation which we call is ultimate freedom so it is a systematic uh, training uh, the the training which i took siddh samadhi yog teacher training they have included like not only asanas and pranayam and dhyan but also management and leadership quality which is required to manage your life see you are not leader only in the society you are leader in your own day to day life also you are managing life management talent is more important for any success so this course is not just including all the see if you see the yoga science has been drawn from our vedas we have four vedas right rigveda yajurveda shamved and atharvaveda yoga is one of the discipline which is drawn from rigveda and vedas are the blueprint of the nature all the humans if you really consider our existence as organic we are nothing but a small part of nature and veda is nothing but blueprint of the nature so when you really imbibe the knowledge of vedas which we call the term as yog you are really aligning yourself with the nature the way our existence is created you are simply making sure you are in total alignment with the nature beautiful beautiful This is the course which i took and i really experienced not at the level of mind and intellect but experiential that has changed my attitude towards the life so my attitude towards uh, the depth of your understanding has also changed slightly when i hear the way you uh, refer to yoga as a way to align with the nature so that's quite a big thing many times we are not aligned in our body with the other parts of the body so there is lack of harmony uh, the theme that we have today uh, vijay ji is health happiness and harmony uh, with yoga and what you just uh, suggested we will get to that side but let's begin with the physical health part and many times uh, people are drawn to take care of some immediate uh, need uh, to get cured or uh, maybe to be more active or uh, maybe to improve memory or whatever so talk to me about how uh, yoga and and also allow me to mention that we have so much need of mental health these days so yoga also relates to having a sort of a happy or cheerful disposition towards life if i may say that absolutely uh, yeah so let me explain you first what affects our health right if we really know the problem we can find the solution so what we call as a physical alignments we can also call as this is right you agree with me yes yes now today with the kind of the medical facilities and with the kind of the amenities we have most of the infectious disease has been eliminated or they are to a minimum level but our main what you call is the unrest is coming from the state of our mind if you really look at our day to day behavior our day to day behavior is guided mainly by our likes or our dislikes we like something we want to go after it we don't like it we want to go away from it absolutely now, you you are just like an oscillation now what happens your mind goes through the mental aberration mind also oscillates so there is a corresponding level of agitation at the level of mind when you are attending only to your likes and your dislikes this mental aberration has effect on the glands which produce in like different different enzymes 
in your body so when the 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 enzymes the flow of the enzymes the quantity is disturbed all your easiness goes away and you start feeling this ease you are not at ease with yourself so you might experience at the level of your being as that something is not right so this is how the health challenges enter in our mind we try to really control it outside by doing things right on the outside world but we are not understanding that the real problem is the aberration of the mind the oxidation of the mind if we learn how to find the solution samadhan with the mind your agitation at the level of mind is really taken care of you become still within and when you are still within all your glands they behave organically healthy so you don't have to go after the health you are natural see there is a difference between trying to become healthy and become naturally healthy when your mind is still you are naturally healthy because you are the way you are created by the nature there is no child unless there is a specific uh, deformation in the child there is no child which is unhealthy when when it is coming in the world but we later on the way we groom our children the society put the challenges the education the burden that's how the child which is seeing infinite possibility when they were they when we were young when they come and become grown up adult they are only after few things because yeah. they are not infinite possibilities uh, we really, you are, you articulated so well it is beautiful and uh, it it seems uh, we are thinking differently most of the time when i say differently meaning we feel that we have to constantly think about the solution of the whatever problems we have whether it their imaginary problem or their actual problem but so thinking making strategies planning and all that i i know you are not taking that away from the plate but the way you are putting it seems like having the ability to have the stillness of mind is even more important than having plans and strategies is it that is so true because see being alertful see, whenever you experience the problem the fundamental experience of the problem is there is a boundary beyond which you cannot go there is an obstructions you are seeing beyond which at present you think that you cannot travel now if you are mentally alert you will be able to look at the different alternatives to really come over it but if you are confused at the level of mind your ability to focus on the solution is hampered you will not be able to see many alternatives but you will feel burdened this is what is happening with the people see the amount of commun communication we face every day today is keeping our mind so busy that our ability to focus on the problem is day by day reducing now if you learn how to keep your mind still within your ability like it is just like a duster you are cleaning up a blackboard then what you write can be easily legible when there is a lot of things already cluttered and you try to write something you will not be able to make the sense out of it so yoga takes you to a level where your mind is clean and your ability to focus on the issue is far better compared to the cluttered state of your mind beautiful vijay you articulated so well that i want to clap and when i clap i am reminded of somebody said tali yoga also somebody said laughter yoga but going going continuing with the traditional way yeah the uh, traditional way of understanding yoga we, there are multiple asanas and each one body type is different so probably you would be in a position to suggest or maybe some yoga expert would be in a position to suggest to a particular individual as to which set of asanas would work for him or her and also the flexibility of our body uh, declines as we age uh, some people are born different also but let me take name of one asana which i like because in english it translates as 
happiness related because sukhasana sukhasana so you are, you are in the in the yeah. position of sukha so yeah. tell me about sukhasana and then again different minds different nature uh, different ways of uh, attaining happiness so sukhasana would mean different for different individuals see uh, first of all you very rightly said you know everything we do in our life is for happiness so just by sitting in one, one particular posture if you are getting happiness that is something really great right everybody thinks that to become happy you have to go do something get something and then become happy this is what most people think that but people do not understand that happiness is a state of mind there is there is no happiness in any object individual or situation see if you if the happiness was in outside like i like something let let's say i like sweet i eat cake the first piece i eat i was somewhat imbalanced in the sugar and now i feel really good because i'm moving towards a balance second piece even it's fine you know but less than the first piece third piece now i am at a level where i cannot take anything more now if the happiness was in the piece of cake the fourth piece should also bring me happiness but it's not happening because now your state of mind has changed to a balanced level the the the, the exactly what i said the mind is still that's where you are happy happiness has nothing to do with what you do external that external thing is affecting on the state of your mind that is why you become happy or you become unhappy so this asan which you call sukhasan has a different different way like some people like when they are not flexible even in the chair you sit uh, with leg folded like one over other that is sukhasan if you can sit on the on the on the ground the way i am sitting right now with cross leg that is also sukhasan some people stand one leg uh, for years and years but their their mind is still they are beyond the all the limitations which you and me experience they don't experience their mind is still within that particular posture so for them that is also sukhasan as such if you really go to the ashtang yoga of patanjali you start with yam niyam and asan is the third set like you you start climbing the ladder first is yam second is niyam and third is asan the meaning of asan is being steady in a one particular posture where you are experiencing you are in alignment with your true self so sukhasan initially the way you are describing it goes with mental like your physical comfort also but it can transcend as you evolve your sukhasan can change so Beautiful. that difficult posture you are still happy so some people like horizontal asan like they are always happy when they are horizontal some people like nidrasana the so sleeping asana so vijay ji um, it is so so um, nice to listen to you and uh, i was just thinking you should also do some pravachan on yoga etc but for now continuing uh, with the importance of pranayam and especially we talked about uh, staying focused and there are so many distractions etc so do you, which which is more um, effective in having that sense of focus is it the role of asanas or pranayam or what is the difference in terms of the way they impact us see this is a very beautiful question most people think pranayam means breathing i am telling you unfortunately i have to use that term that they are wrong i don't like to use this word pran ayam pran means life force ayam means to expand when you are learning how to expand the life force it is called pranayam now there are different techniques is a different thing but we have to understand that you are using breath as a tool you using something as a tool and you using something as a term that oh that is the way different thing you don't know how to use the tool 
you're not going to get the results. So the breathing is used as a tool to expand your prana. Now there are different ways. One is called like sectional prana, which is a Raj Yoga, right? Second is called, it is using the different position of the hands. Second is called mudra prana. You use the fingers. Like all these girls, you know, they do Arangatra. They, they, they dance for many, many hours, but they draw energy through the position of the fingers. Then there is a Hatha Yoga. Then there are Kriyas. See, all this is a combination of different, different techniques of using the breath. Now, the bottom line is with breath, you are using how to clean up your pranamai kosha. We have five bodies. Physical body, the way you see. Then is called pranamai shari, uh, which is called energy body. Then you call a manomai kosha, which is emotional body. Then vijnanamai, which is your intellect shift. And last is the bliss shift, the ananamai kosha. Now, Pranayam works on your pranamai kosha. Your prana sharir is like six inches away from your physical body. If you really draw an aura which is six feet around surrounding your physical body, it's your pranamai sharir. Pranamai sharir is affected the way you breathe. If you are breathing shallow, you are going to lose your prana much faster. Your lifespan is going to reduce. You are going to live a much lower level of life and also very few years. If you are breathing like your number of breath per minute is as low as possible, your ability of thinking, there is a constant relationship between the way you think and the way you breathe. They are interactive. If your breathing is correct, your thinking process is correct. If you are aggravated and if you are anxious, your breath becomes shallow, automatic. They have a very deep correlation. Pranayam is the way using the breath you learn how your thinking process is really going on. So when you learn proper pranayam, you cleanse your pranamai sharir. You also understand the thinking process. Like in a bathroom, you put six people, they'll be confused. But if you tell them to go one after another, they all are comfortable in doing uh, and getting relaxed. So pranayam is the same thing. It sequences your thinking process instead of having so many thoughts simultaneously. You get the right one. You have ability. Beautiful. To... So I got the right one. And now it is the last 30 seconds or so. Uh, so we will uh, actually wind up. But we promise from you that we will continue uh, such sessions. Uh, <laughs> and this came by with in the context of International Day of Yoga. So talk to me about how um, this United Nations Declaration of International Day of Yoga has changed people's perception about yoga. What has been your experience? See, if you ask me, it has changed uh, perception all over the world, upside down. But that's not very important. But because it has got recognition outside world, now people in India, they got up from their sleep that, oh, this is something. <laughs> <laughs> including, including the diaspora, which is living outside India, they started realizing that we had a gem which was lying in the dust. So they started polishing it. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> so me... it has changed, uh, I'm telling you, and with Narendra Modi's involvement in yoga, it is climbing everyday new heights. Beautiful. So on this uh, height of um, fresh, uh, energized uh, commitment to pursue <laughs> learning or practicing yoga, Vijay Trivedi Markandeji, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much for me. It's a pleasure and lots and lots of good wishes. Okay. So thank you. Uh, yeah.
always an opportunity for us to meet. Last year also we met and you have, we had a wonderful session. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity. So thanks to you and thanks to all of you with lots of good wishes. Thank you.